Hi, this is Squad, and in this video, I want to tell you about cardiac action potential. Here's an action potential of a typical ventricular cell. It has a few different phases. This is called phase zero, that's the shooting up. This is called phase one, quick drop, and uh, phase two, plateauing and a little dropping, and phase three, lots of dropping, and phase four, the uh, resting, so this is also phase four. So let's talk about what's happening. Around here, the cell receives some kind of stimulation, and because of this, voltage-gated sodium channel and voltage-gated calcium channels open up. There are way more sodium outside than inside. There are way, way more calcium outside than inside. The ratio of sodium is about 10 to 1, out to in, and calcium is even crazier, 1,000 to 1, because cells use calcium as internal uh, secondary messengers, so you want to make sure that the calcium levels are low. In the cell, you've got about 1.5 nanomolar concentration of calcium, and for sodium, it's about 10 millimolar. Okay, so with this stimulation, these channels open up because outside you have more of these ions, they flow in, and the cell will experience increase in the membrane potential. The y-axis here starts about 70 negative. This is the resting membrane potential. Resting membrane potential of a cell where only sodium can move is about 60 millivolt, but calcium is about 120 millivolt. So they're way, way up there. With the flow of these uh, ions, the cell tries to approach these high membrane potentials, and this is another interpretation of why the membrane potential of the cell goes up. Now, for typical membrane potential of a neuron and others, the drop happens pretty quickly, but here the drop has a little bit of a shoulder. Let's talk about what is it that's keeping the membrane potential more positive. There are um, two factors, both have to do with calcium. The first factor is this, the calcium channel doesn't close as fast as the sodium channel. So in a regular action potential, the one that drops quicker, what's happening is that the, in a rising phase, sodium channel is open and the M is open. The H gate is trying to close, but it's closing takes some time. At the tip, M is open the most, but H closes and NA flow stops. And then the drop takes place because other forces, the negative forces that I'll discuss will drive the action potential of the cell down. Now, for calcium, however, the closing is not gonna take place way later. So there's always gonna be some inflow of calcium, and this is going to keep the action potential more positive. And the second factor is this. Calcium is the secondary messenger of a typical cell, so cell wants to keep a calcium level low. But the calcium closes late, and all of this positivity comes from inflow of calcium. That's not that good. That's why a cell has this thing called a sodium-calcium exchanger. It's protein that tries to kick the calcium out. But in the kicking of the calcium out, one calcium goes out for every three sodium that come in. Calcium is two plus, sodium is one plus. So each of this transaction leaves plus one charge in the cell. And if you do this transaction over and over, you accumulate this plus ones because sodiums are coming in and now there's even more influence towards this positive side. Okay, so let's talk about now these negative forces that are driving the action potential down. Just like a neuronal cell, they have to do with potassium and the potassiums are usually high within a cell and low outside a cell. For the cardiac action potential, there are many potassium channels that open in many ways. Some are opened by voltage, some are opened by ligand. And here, let me tell you a few of them. First, see this sharp tip, that's the phase one. Phase one uses the potassium channel that opens, called a TO, stands for transient outflow. What it's doing is that actually here, the action potential crosses zero millivolt. It goes from the negative world to the positive world. And when this happens, the voltage-gated potassium channel TO opens, and the opening will drive the cell towards that of potassium's membrane potential with the TO opening. That's not 60, that's not 120, that's like about negative 70 millivolt. So the cell experiences this quick drop in its action potential trying to approach this. And this can happen by outflow of potassium, leaving more and more negativity 
within the cell. Then all of this drop happens. There are many influencers that drive this process down. KR and then you have KS opening, you got other Ks. All these are potassium channels that open via a different kind of trigger and all of them lead to uh, more potassium flowing out of the cell and dropping of the cell's membrane potential. So in the phase two and phase three, you see this drop. Now let's talk about the phase four. Phase four happens because there's another potassium channel that's working actively to maintain this potassium concentration balance. It's not activated by voltage, it's activated by something called PIP2 and other uh, intracellular signals. What this channel is going to do is it's going to constantly take in potassium to make sure that the cell has higher potassium than outside and this balance gives you the overall negative 7-ish millivolt of resting cell membrane potential. And if you remember, the computation of this is EK equals RTZFLN, ratio of the potassium concentration inside over potassium concentration outside. So this is negative unit and potassium is more inside than outside. This is positive. Negative times positive is going to give you negative. And what this channel is trying to do is to maintain this strong inequality of concentration to drive this negative resting membrane potential. And lastly, let me talk about the difference between phase two and phase three. They have to do with the closing of voltage-gated NA channel. NA channel has this M gate and then this H gate. So let's look at M and H individually. X axis, voltage, Y axis, openness of that gate. Uh, the M gate starts closed, negative side, positive side. This is negative 60 millivolt near the resting membrane potential. M is closed to begin with, but it opens up again with high memory potential. H starts open, but it closes with this uh, increase in the membrane potential. M, however, is fast to change. So it can go from closed to open fast, open to close fast, it's pretty fast. H is a slow, it takes time for it to close, and it takes time for it to open. And that's why when the cell membrane potential is going up, the M opens up quickly, and there will be delayed close of H, and that little gap gives you opportunity for NA to sneak into the cell. But eventually at this tip, H will catch up and close. But when the membrane potential is going down, so we're going to the left in this x-axis, H should open, but it's going to take some time for H to open. And during this phase two, H is closed the entire way. This is called the absolute refractory period or effective refractory period in cardiology. What it means is that even if you stimulate this heart with this stimulation during this ARP or ERP, there's going to be no new action potential formed because the only voltage gated NA channel is this kind and this kind's H gate is closed. But once you get to this three phase, the H gates start to open for all of these uh, membrane of this type. And if you hit this cell with a strong enough stimulation, then yes, boom, you might get another action potential. But this stimulation has to be much stronger than the initial one needed because now the potassiums are fighting you, right? Before, in this activation, all these potassium channels are not fighting the positiveness, but now this second hit at this phase three, the potassiums are all working. So you have to work even harder to initiate that initial action potential. So in summary, here is the ventricular action potential. You have this rising phase carried out by the NA and CA. They wanna to go to positive. And here, NA closes completely and NA will stay closed until the end of phase two. And here, calcium's on, and calcium is going to keep coming in and give you this nice shoulder. But calcium is pretty bad, so NA calcium exchanger is going to uh, take out one calcium, taking three NA, and resulting in net positive plus. So all this positive calcium influence and the exchanger influence is going to give you this more than usual positiveness. And this positiveness is going to be countered by the potassium's negativeness. In the top, you have the potassium transient out that's going to, boom, drop the membrane potential by kicking out the potassium. Why kicking out? Because you have crossed zero millivolt, so kicking out the potassium drives down the membrane potential. And then all these phase two and phase three, you have many delayed rectifier potassium channels that get opened up. These could be the KR or KS that open slowly towards the end and drive down this uh, membrane potential of the cell. And after phase two is over, the sodium channels H gate opens, so you could hit this 
cell with a strong activation like you did here, but much stronger to start another membrane potential. Why does it have to be stronger? It's because in this late phase, you have all these delayed rectifiers working, so you have to fight harder to establish the action potential. And finally, there are potassium channels for the resting membrane potential maintenance, and these are the inward rectifiers. They are not voltage gated, they are gated by some other intracellular signals, and what they do is they constantly make sure that Ks are coming in, and there's low K outside, then K inside. And this inequality of K concentration is what's keeping this membrane potential to be this low. And finally, I keep talking about KR. That's because KR is H-E-R-G protein, and this protein is a very sticky protein, meaning that if you have a drug that's for some other purposes, this drug might bind to H-E-R-G and affect how KR works. And this is bad because your heart cells use this KR to control how long the action potential is. If the KR is not working well, then the shoulder is going to be longer, right? Because there's less negative drive. So drugs accidentally messing up this KR function can lengthen the action potential and mess up your uh, cardiac cells. And another thing that can drive this lengthening of the action potential, which is not that good, is not being able to close the calcium channel. If you keep the calcium channel open for too long, then calciums will accumulate in the cell, right? And calcium is also dangerous intracellularly, so the exchanger is also going to work hard to kick out one calcium and take in three sodium. And this transaction leads to net plus one accumulation intracellularly. So calcium coming in is more positive inside and cleaning up of calcium is also more positive. So in net, the positive influence is going to stay and keep driving this action potential to stay positive.